Hello, fellow wrestling fans. How are you? Here they know what happened on Monday Night Raw, February the 5th, 2024. Raw opened up with Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Cody Rose talking about is Cody going to challenge Seth for the World Championship? If not, McIntyre says, I want a shot at him. He up to Cody. He's like, think about it. Now you were going to let two part-timers ruin your WrestleMania? And by the way, folks, the fans were shitting all over the rock. And Roman Reigns. They were chant, we want Cody Roman too. The Rock sucks. Like, it took 30 minutes for Cody, Seth, and McIntyre to even start talking. Because the fans were really that loud. And then online, people are posting, um, when they're a live show, they're showing the Roman Rock fame. And the fans are just booing the shit out of it. So, Triple H has made an announcement. This Thursday, there's going to be a press conference in Las Vegas. He's going to talk about why it's going to be Roman versus The Rock. He, all that. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's going to realize the fans don't want this, and maybe he's going to fix it. Now, I know a way he can fix it. Me? WrestleMania is two nights, right? How Why do you have The Rock versus Roman night one, and the winner of that match faces Cody at night two? Plain and simple, right? Um, opening match was a fatal four-way match. The winner of this team would go on to SmackDown this Friday night to face Ty the Bay and Pete Dunne. Where the winner of that match will go on to face Damian Priest, to Finn Balor, and Judge Bidet at the Eliminate Chamber for the Tag Team Championships. It was the Creed Brothers, the New Day, Imperium, and Johnny Gagano, Tommaso Ciampa, DIY. Great fatal four-way tag to open up the show. Action packed. Xavier Woods and a uh, leap up drop kick on um, Tommaso Ciampa. They started off. Kobe hit him with a top row cross body. Then Ludwig ran in and shoved Kobe into the ring post to stop the New Day's momentum. Xavier Woods was on fire, cleaning the house. At one point, he turned around, got down, slingshot, speared his ass down. Everybody besides Imperium took turns climbing up on the top rope and doing a move to the outside, knocking down everybody else. That was pretty neat. Um, at one point, Kobe hit Gargano with the famous sir. Turn around. Champa hit a run and knee to his face. Champa turned around. Xavier Woods super kicked him down. Xavier Woods turned around. Brutus Creed freaking over his suplexed him. Brutus turned around. And Da Vinci leveled his ass with that run across body. That was awesome. Um, Brutus had a top row moonsault on Ludwig. Got up. And Da Vinci hit him again with that run across body. Um, back and forth, any man can win. At one point, Brutus had Da Vinci locked in the ankle lock submission. Julius Creed kept overhead tossing everybody that was coming in the ring. Like, double suplexed, overhead toss, DIY. And then he just single-handed doing it. Every time he did it, do the HBK style nip up. During all that, Da Vinci never tapped out. So props to Da Vinci there for never tapping. Um, the Creed brothers hit one of the double team finishers. On, I I apologize. I don't know who which member, which team, who it was. Suddenly, Tommaso Ciampa got down, slid in the ring, clothesline Julius Creed outside, hit the double team super kick, running knee to the face on Brutus for the one two three. So DIY is going to SmackDown to face Pete Dunne, tie the bait. Um, next up, uh, Wyndham's Tag Team Championships was on the line. Oscar and Kobe Shane of Damage Control defended against former champions Kate and Connor Katana Chance, which they beat. Two weeks ago on SmackDown. Really good match. Like The match on SmackDown was very good. This one delivered as well. Uh, man. Oscar Kari Shane had a double team. After double team moves on Kane and Carter. Like, they had a double team like drop kick. Into a bulldog. And then a double team kick strike. Into a face plant buster. Then they had a that double team cold breaker. Where Oscar delivered a cold breaker. And held on so Kobe Shane can do a run and roll over blockbuster. Well, they did that to Katana Chance. So the former tag champ said, you know what? We can do some double team moves as well. So they hit Oscar with double team kick strikes. And then uh, floor her ass with a double team neck breaker 450 splash. But Kobe Shane just made the same nick of time. Um, so Katie Connor tossed her ass outside. Tossed Oscar outside. And then Katana Chance ran and Katie John tossed her over. Her shoulders, and she landed on both the champions outside, knocked them both down. Um, I, at one point, Katie Carter 
um, counter whatever Kari Shane was doing off the top rope, but she didn't really get the counter 100% accurate, and they both collided wrong, and that looked nasty. That Ooh, that looked painful. The champs retained when Asuka nailed um, Katana Chance with a spin kick, and then Kari Shane hit the top rope, elbow drop for the 1-2-3 to remain tag team champions. Becky Lynch took on Shayna Baszler. The winner of this match will go on into the Elimination Chamber uh, in Australia, where the winner of that chamber will face Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania for the World of Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley was originally going to be defending the championship in the chamber, but she came out and won a piece of Nia Jax's ass for Nia attacking her last week. So Adam Paris said, okay, you two can have a match at the pay-per-view for the championship instead. So now it's Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax at the pay-per-view defending I mean, so we're fighting for the Wardle Winnem's Championship. That should be a really good match. So I'm curious who they're going to replace in the chamber. Because originally, Nia Jax, Rhea Ripley, were really going to be in the chamber. Um, really good match. Shayna Baszler and Becky Lynch put on well. All match, both Winnem did unique counters to the other ones. Kojiji Clutch, Chokehold, um, Disarmor Submissions. That was awesome. At one point, Shayna closed on Becky to the outside. Then trapped her hand. Between the still steps and stomped on the arm. And then drop kicked the, hand, the steps of where her hand was still trapped. And then she started working on the arm. Then she started delivering those gut wrench suplexes. Becky answered back with a top rope drop kick. Into an arm bar submission. But Shayna Baszler got out of that. With a, um, rapid fire forearms to break up the submission. Then she applied the Kijiji cut to Choco. Becky reversed it over. Picked her up. Rock bottom. One, two, three. Your winner going into the chamber, Becky Lynch. This apparently, and I checked, this is Becky Lynch's first ever time entering the Elimination Chamber. Wow. Usually um, at the show, she was the champion defending the title outside the chamber, or she was injured when the chambers were happening, or she wasn't around. This is her first time ever entering the Elimination Chamber, so that's impressive. And I like what Michael Cole said here. Shayna Baszler holds the record. For the Wyndham's Eliminate Chamber matches throughout the years. With the only one to eliminate everyone else in the chamber. I remember that one. But I also remember she eliminated someone very fast. But that's still a cool record to have. Um, Arvar and Sarah Logan took on the team of Akira Tozal, Maxine Dupree. This was a waste of time to put on TV. Power rang. Tozal knocked down Arvar. Jumped up, splashed him. Then Maxine Dupree did that stupid backwards caterpillar, but then she slid sexy on top of Tozawa, so it was like a double pin on Arvar. So Logan broke it up. Then Sarah Logan hit bump Maxine Dupree down. Arvar, top rope wall, strongest slam on Tozawa for the one, two, three. Fast match. I just, I don't even know why they put that match on TV. It was going to be that quick. Like, usually they have fast, like, longer matches, not a fast one. The Miz. Took on J.D. Madugo with Dominic Mysterio rings on out. Before this match, Judgment Day was backstage. Damien said Ray Ripley is dealing with Adam Paris, Nia Jax's issue. Um, because this took place before the qualifying chamber match. Um, so he said, I'm staying in the back. Balder staying in the back. You two can handle the miss. Our truth showed up. Backstage in the locker room. Like, hey, guys, how's it going? It's like, Truth. Like, well, um, you want our ass kicking? Truth's like, no, man. That was an initiative, right? Like, I got my ass. And I'm telling you guys, you guys did whoop my ass good. But now I'm part of Judgment Day, right? Because I passed the test because I took the ass kicking. So, Balder just left. Dominic and um, J.D. Badugo left. Damian Priest, you know what? You know what? Kick back, relax, enjoy the Judgment Day locker room. mean left. So, our truth. Pulled up the recliner and leaned back. Then he noticed there was Judgment Day t-shirts. And then the ones with his name on. So he's like, they do love me. That was so funny. So, back to the match. Um, short match. Um, every time Miz will get the offense going by yes kicks in the corner. They run a big boot to the face. Dominic Mysterio calls a distraction. Allow J.D. Madugo to hit like an enziguri kick. Or like a jump up power slam. On the Miz, you know, to stop the offense. Suddenly, our truth came out. Sound t-shirts on the audience. He put a t-shirt on Dominic. Dominic was telling him, like, what the hell, man? He turned around. Miz, big boot him in the face. This part was cool. The Miz rolled in the ring. 
When he rolled in the ring, J.D. Madugo hit him with a top rope moonsault. Almost won the match, though. That was awesome. But the minutes kicked out. Then R2 handed J.D. Madugo a stack of cash like this. And he says, that's for all those t-shirts I just sold. So J.D. Madugo said, this is my share. And then he was sticking them in his trunk. So the man's hit the skull crusher finale for the one, two, three. After the match, he said, thanks, Troop. Great plan. It worked out. R2 was like, what plan? No, like, there was no plan. So next week on Raw, J.D. Madugo won a piece of R-Truth. Adam Pearce is to make the match official. R-Truth versus J.D. Madugo next week on Raw. Um, yeah, main event on Raw came about when on a live show, Cody Rhodes was somewhere. I think it was Knoxville, Tennessee, they said. Could be wrong. He just finished the match. He went backstage and Nakamura missed him in the face. Hit King Sasuke. So the main event tonight on Raw was a Texas bull rope match. I was disappointed, however, because it was the standard Texas bull rope match where you all have, one guy has to touch four turnbuckle pads in a row to win, but if somebody, the other guy stops him um, and cuts off the momentum, the match restarts. But no, this one was just pinfall submissions. So that was kind of disappointing. They announced this, the very same bull rope, Dusty Rhodes, as news throughout the years. Um, the bell rang. Nakamura quickly tripped Cody with the bow rope. And just delivered knees to the guts. Like eight of them in a row. Placed him on the top rope. Hit a running knee to the guts there. Uh, Cody Rhodes. Sorry. Repeatedly sent a Nakamura face first to the ring post. News in the cowbell. Cow rope. Then he hit Nakamura in the face a couple times with the cowbell. Then he applied the figure four submission. At one point. Nakamura. Um. Couldn't get a hold of the rope break for the rope for rope break. So he grabbed a hold of the cowbell and just smacked it repeatedly across the face on Cody Rose to get free of the figure four. Went for King Sasuke twice. Cody countered both times, once with a pedigree, once with a Cody cutter. Nakamura hit that sliding German suplex off the ropes he does. Then he pulled Cody Rose into the ropes and Cody hurt his leg. So Nakamura went for a third King Sasuke. Cody Rose ducked. Turn around, missed to the face, but Cody grabbed hold of the cowbell, bashed Nakamura with it a couple times at crossroads for the one, two, three. After the match, as Cody Rhodes was celebrating, Drew McIntyre came in, claymored him, beat his ass, and left him laying. Um, there was a couple segments. Um, Sammy Zane delivered a promo where um, he was up in the belt, up in the arena stands. The chairs out before the arena opened up for the show. He said, everybody thinks he can't be a singles champion. He said, I'm a former two-time Intercontinental champion, former NXT world champion. People seem to forget that about me. So he said, I had a great run last year with Kevin Owens, his tag team champions. We ended the Usos, the run, longest running tag team title run streak. He said, but now it's time for me to go after singles gold. He said, this is interesting. If Dan Paris can't give me opportunities, maybe Nick Adalis will. And he said, I also know I got to pick up some wins to get some title chances. So he's also going to do that as well. Gunfer and Perry came out celebrated. Gunfer's 600 plus day historic title run. Keep it up, Gunfer. Um, Jay Uso interrupted. He wants a title shot. Gunfer said, plain and simple, you don't deserve one. You have to earn it. So, next week on Raw, it's Imperium versus New Day and Jey Uso on six-man tag. Uh, during the segment, Jey Uso said, When you were Intercontinental Champion on SmackDown when you first won that title, I never went after you because I was helping me and Jimmy were tag team champions. Then you went to Raw, continued to be Intercontinental Champion. Now I'm on Raw, I'm a singles guy, I'm now part of the bloodline, I want a shot. And Gunfer said again, you have to earn your chance. So maybe Jey Uso pins him in the six-man tag to get a title shot. We don't know. Um, next week on Raw, it's also Liv Morgan versus Zoe Stark in an Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Um, Liv Morgan sent a promo that she's been out for a year and a half with his injury. And Rhea Ripley's one that injured her. So she said, I'm not looking to win tag team titles. I'm not looking... To go over to SmackDown. I want Rhea Ripley's ass. And I want that championship. I won't be the one to take it away from her. So she said, unfortunately, Zoe Stark. You ain't winning. And qualifying for the chamber. Uh, so you have it, folks. Um, overall, definitely check out Raw. All the matches are good. 
Um, except for the tag match of Arvar, Sarah Logan, Tozawa, and Maxine Dupree. That match was just like, like two minutes. Um, definitely check out the Miz, our true Miz, JD Maduga, our true Dominic match because that was a cool storyline build up. Definitely check out the Bulwark match with Cody and Nakamura and the Fatal Four Way and the Women's Tag Team Championship match. Um, I do realize the Miz Chamber is two weeks away. It's a six warm chamber. If they're only going to be doing a chamber qualifying match once a week, they're not going to have all the slots filled. So I don't know if when I'm on SmackDown is going to be qualifying as well, maybe. Because um, I know it's like Red Morgan's always starts his next week, and the week after that is the Chamber. So how can you have other Chamber qualifying match and have three slots empty unless maybe him Adam Paris realize I'll throw some tags in? Because you could do some tags. Like, have Katie Carter, Katan Chance, Piper Nevin, Chelsea Green, the winning team goes into the chamber. That's two slots filled in one match. But I'm thinking, like, Bianca Barrier wants a chance at a title. She said so on SmackDown. And that's what I'm thinking. You might see on SmackDown some chamber qualifying matches. So it'll be like an interbranded chamber. Um, Man, Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax are going to tear the house down in Australia. And Bronson Reed's always said he wants a match in his hometown as well. So it looks like maybe this is gonna be an all raw exclusive pay per view, um, because like we up to get on raw, Bronze Reed's on raw. Maybe not. Maybe SmackDown throw a couple matches in because Ushi. Now I think of it, every chamber has two chamber matches at the pay per view. So maybe SmackDown will have an elimination chamber for maybe Logan Paul's United States Championship because Logan Paul will find out on SmackDown whose next challenger is. Maybe his next challenger is going to be the winner of the chamber. Or maybe that poor sucker's got to finish title inside the chamber. Let me know below in the comments though. Do you think Logan Paul may be defending his championship inside the chamber? Or find out who's going to be defending it against at WrestleMania with the winner winning the chamber for a title shot. Also, let me know below in the comments. What are your thoughts of Ray Ripley versus Nia Jax? Are you excited? Are you disappointed in it? Um, or do you think that it should have been an Eliminate Chamber match for Rhea Ripley's championship? Stay safe, everybody. To so we back.